Welcome. Today is Monday, November the 5th. It's uh, now time for the uh, weekly San Jose State uh, football press conference. Uh, several items. Uh, first of all, uh, quarterback David Fales, the uh, most accurate passer in the football bowl subdivision, was named the Western Athletic Conference Offensive Player of the Week for his uh, performance last week, throwing four touchdown passes as uh, San Jose State. Defeated University of Idaho 42 to 13. Uh, secondly, uh, freshman Austin Lopez was named uh, one of 20 semifinalists today for the 2012 Luke Groza Award. Presently, uh, Austin is uh, 13 for 13 in field goals. He's one of three uh, FBS kickers left who has uh, made all of his attempts uh, this season. He's also one of two freshmen among the 20 semifinalists. Uh, this Wednesday again at uh, Original Joe's at 6 p.m., the Mike McIntyre radio show will be taped. Uh, you're more than welcome to come and have a good time with uh, the coach and uh, the various hosts and guests of the show. Uh, one more reminder that uh, the next home game is Saturday, uh, November 17th against BYU. That is a 7.30 p.m. game. If your ticket says 1 o'clock, that ticket will be honored as good for admission. There also are uh, some new ticket prices for that game and the final home game on November the 24th. Check www.sjsuspartans.com for the new November ticket prices. So with that, uh, we'll call up and congratulate uh, San Jose State uh, football coach Mike McIntyre for leading the Spartans to a seventh win and bowl eligibility. Coach? Thanks, Lawrence. Appreciate it. A uh, little bit about Saturday's game um, at Idaho. Um, didn't start out as well as we'd like. We had a couple mishaps, but I thought our kids were definitely 100% ready to play. And uh, we had a mishap there at the beginning. Um, got down. Never, not one person on the sidelines panicked. Um, thought the kids held their composure and just kept playing. Um, once we got the lead, we never relinquished the lead. And uh, once we kind of got rolling there in the middle of the third quarter, um, when we felt like we had a chance to strike and finish them, our kids finished the game. And uh, it's, uh, that was really, really good to see. And it was good to see them come back from some adversity and a lot of excitement from the other team. I knew the other team would be coming ready to play. Um, and uh, um, I thought I was really proud of how they fought back and how they finished the football game. Uh, also, um, it was really exciting to see David Fales have another phenomenal game. And uh, he played great and definitely deserved the, the WAC uh, player, the, player of the week. And I'll um, take any uh, questions from here. And coach, now that you have hit that bowl eligibility mark, what does anything change, or how, how do you guys, you know, approach going forward as you look to solidify your your bowl standing? Well, uh, we have a saying: we're just going to turn on more steam, and uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to prepare extremely hard uh, for this game. This is a big game for us, um, and a lot of people say, well, "What do you mean by that?" Well, a um, bunch of the guys in this room went there three years ago and got beat on the very last play of the game. And it was a heart-crushing loss, just kind of like our Idaho game was three years ago. So uh, these young men are going back there, understanding that, um, you know, understanding that the last time New Mexico State played on their home field, um, they almost beat Louisiana Tech. The Louisiana Tech came in averaging about 58 points a game and uh, didn't get their 28th point till somewhere there near the end of the fourth quarter. Um, so it's going to be a very, very, very tough test for us. Um, and the last two years, they beat us two, three years ago, and then last year we beat them um, in a close game. Um, so we're looking forward to a, a hard 60-minute football game. Coach, you touched on it a little bit, um, but how do you characterize the slow start on Saturday? Well, with just the one turnover on the kickoff return. Um, you know, that's what we did. We, you know, we, um, they made a good play on defense later on. We, uh, you know, stopped them on a big fourth down. We, you know, we were playing hard. Um, you know, Ronnie Yell made a really, really good run on the kickoff return, and he's jumping over a guy. And as he's jumping over the guy, you know, you're trying to get your balance. He had good security, and the guy hit him just as he jumped over the guy. Um, 
I really can't fault Ronnie. That that happens in football sometimes. And he made he made five guys miss to get to that point. So I don't think it was that he wasn't playing hard. It just the ball popped out. But the you know the fumble on the kickoff um, return really gave them some a boost of energy there. That kind of gave them life, so to speak. And then we fought through that. And uh, I think after I mean they had ten three and outs. We came ready to play. Um, a quarterback threw for the record. You know he threw four touchdowns again. So. You know, you take away the beginning fumble, I think it's a whole different – I don't think the game's as close as it was for the time it was. Nothing against Idaho, but that kind of gave some life to it, made it a little bit um, – we had to kind of fight out of some emotional deals there. And to be honest with you, that, that's good for our kids – for us to see. I think it's really good for us to see. On the road, get down like that, have two or three bad things go in a row and you never hang your head and you keep fighting, I think that shows a lot to the maturity of our football team. Okay, so what does this mean for the school in San Jose State as far as revenue? Do you think there's going to be more people coming out to the games now? I sure hope so. Um, you know, we have the best record they've had here since 1986 before any of our players were even alive. And so we would love to see more and more people come out. But the people that are out there, we love them. They support us. They're loud. They're exciting. We're glad they're out there. But we would love more and more people to come see our product. There's no doubt about it. Uh, what does it mean to you personally as, as a coach to have the team be bowl eligible? Well, um, uh, personally, it's it's fun to be able to play in the postseason. I also think that it's great for us to, for recruiting. Um, your name's going to be out there more. Um, it gives us more practice days for the 2013 team. Um, you, you, as a coach, you're always th you have to always think that way. Um, and then, really, when it all boils down to it, it's just awesome to, for those young men to have an opportunity. Um, you know, we've got to keep winning to make sure we have the opportunity we want. Um, being bowl eligible doesn't always mean that you're definitely in. Um, but uh, and with no way do we want to stop winning. Uh, we want to keep our we want to keep it going. We want to, you know, we want to get five road games in a row. I don't know how long it's been since around here. To ask Lawrence how long that's been, and uh, so that's a big big deal for us. And we still absolutely have a shot to to win the WAC. Uh, we win again this weekend. We're 4-1 and one in the WAC, and we have the best team in the WAC coming to our place on the last Saturday of the season. Um, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Hey, Coach. Today's Twitter question of the day, sponsored by Rubio's, comes from Colton Syke, and he wants to know, uh, what are you doing to motivate the players and to keep them focused for this next game against a team like New Mexico State? Well, I really don't have to say anything, to be honest with you. Um, we talk about a lot of things, um, but I could tell even after the game was over, um, they were excited about our win, um, but they wanted to keep winning. Um, they're excited about what we've won on the road. They've never done that here before. Um, you know, the kids in our locker room haven't won a lot of games till this year. We've won more games this year than we won the two years previous, and we'd like to win enough games that we win more than the three years previous. And those young men are hungry. They can taste it. They enjoy winning. Um, so I think it's contagious. Um, also, they um, last time they went to New Mexico State, you don't have to say much. Um, that was a tough, tough, heartbreaking loss. And those kids remember it. And most of those guys are playing. And uh, it's a big deal for us. Uh, so, so much has already been said about David Fales, but how, how did you react when you found out that he won the offensive award today? And, and, and did you think it was overdue? I haven't told him yet. Um, he probably has been told, uh, but I haven't seen him yet in person. He was here this morning. I was in meetings when, when he came by to eat. Uh, I'll, uh, he'll be back around this afternoon, um, and I'll get to talk to him. Um, but uh, I'm pretty sure he was excited. But as I've gotten to know David, um, he's so humble. Um, he kind of just takes it all in, just kind of keeps going. He's steady. He's always got a smile on his face. Has a ton of energy, a ton of energy. If you come out last night to practice, he's one running around, yelling, smiling. He'll be there doing the same thing Tuesday. Um, a lot of spunk. Um, he's really uh, a contagious leader, and the kids get it. The kids love it. You know, a lot of people will just look at New Mexico State's record and, and kind of dismiss them. But like you said, they, they were right there with Louisiana Tech. Uh, they were only down 7 nothing with Auburn this week. What does this – what is this – team do that has allowed them to kind of stay close in some of these games? They, they're, Dwayne's, done a, Dwayne's a phenomenal football coach. It's extremely hard at New Mexico State. History has proven that. Um, but they're playing really, really hard. Um, they have some good corners that can cover you. 
Um, they've got a really good pass rusher, um, Devontae, um, number 52, can rush the passer. They have the best receiver in, statistically in the league. He can fly, he can run, Austin Franklin. Quarterback has a big arm, um, so I think they, they're able to make some big plays. I mean, uh, Austin had 154 yards receiving against Auburn with nine catches and a touchdown. So they're able to keep the ball. They're able to have some big play capability. Um, and, uh, um, you know, they're making some plays on, on defense right now. So um, it, it'll be a 60-minute football game. Um, and there's such a fine line between winning and losing. You know, there's three or four plays here or there. And, you know, fortunately, we've been making those plays, and our kids are hustling and understanding what to do. And, um, you know, one thing that we do a good job of is our kids concentrate and practice hard all week. People say, well, everybody practices hard. Yeah, but there's a difference. Our kids are focused. They're thinking. They're enjoying practice. They really are enjoying practice. And when you do that, it ends up showing up on Saturdays. I, I, it's, it's kind of funny. It's almost like osmosis. It just shows up because they're so ready. And uh, eventually all those fundamentals and all those things that we've taught them, they're more precise than the other team, and they're good enough athletes to make plays. Coach, can you tell us a little bit about how this bowl eligibility will do for the future of San Jose State football? Well, I think it's big for the future. Um, you know, the, the key is, is to finish this season out strong. Um, you know, we've kind of got a, a great season going, and we want to finish it out. Um, this kind of just added a, another thing on the top of it, and now we want to finish it out strong. And um, so that's, a, you know, we're looking forward to doing that. Uh, you know, as far as the future goes, again, I think it helps with tremendous in recruiting. People can't say you, you know, they hadn't been to a bowl there, so now you have that. Um, then you have the opportunity to go to a bowl again, back to back, which we'd like to do the next year. Um, so, you know, we're in the process of doing that. But, you know, but before we look into the whole future of the program, we're really honestly looking for next week. But since you asked that question, I think it does help you in recruiting. I think it does give you something to build on and. Then all of a sudden you get one up, then you got to get another one up, and, and then you start building some stability in the program, and um, hopefully your season ticket sales go up and your revenue goes up. So I think it all builds on top of itself um, and goes from there. Yes? So you kind of just touched on what I was going to ask, but do you, what do you think this means for not necessarily football but for our school, for San Jose State? Well, I, I think um, if we you know, keep taking care of business like we can, you know, we're gonna. It puts us on television more. It gets our name out there in the paper more. We're talked about on the internet more. Um, I think it helps. You know, um, people that like the program and like the school. I think it gives, gets more people excited about writing a check to the business school. It gets more people about writing a check to the to the um, basketball program. Writing a check to the football program. And I think that is big for the future of our programs. There's no doubt. And uh, I think that makes them also realize. People's resources are making a difference, and uh, um, that's a big deal. Uh, on Saturday, uh, what was Idaho doing that was stopping the run game? Um, they were uh, they 